This is Michael Dalton, and I am so excited because this is a continuation of our series, Seeing the Unseen. Part two, we're picking up from our last session where we're talking about who rules your life. This is an unlocking of what kingdom are you under? Let's look at the rule, the will, and the power of God. As we dig into this, I want us to pick up from where we were in the last session. Now, we're talking about who rules your life. In creation, there are three kingdoms, and sometimes people don't want to talk about the kingdoms, but I want to say this on purpose. There are really three kingdoms at play. There's the kingdom of God. God makes that clear. Father God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they are one. The three are one. One is three. So the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he rules completely. Underneath the rule of God, underneath his glorious throne, are the angelic forces. And so whether you talk about the archangels and then angels, powers God has in place. And then underneath that, you have the church, the fivefold authority God has put in the earth. This is all the rule of the hand of God. God rules the cosmos by his throne. He rules the heavens by his power, and he rules among men through the church. Now, the second kingdom at play is the kingdom of men. In the kingdom of men, whether it is kings, Presidents, prime ministers, governors, senators, representatives, however you break it down nation by nation, every nation has a kingdom mindset in how they rule, men ruling men. The third arena or the third kingdom is the kingdom of the enemy or the territory or the system of the enemy. However you want to say it, we want to break it down in the kingdom of the enemy you then have the fallen one, the devil. You have underneath that powers, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have three separate kingdoms. The ultimate kingdom that rules over all kingdoms is the kingdom of God, for he has conquered all things by his power and brought them underneath his authority. Okay. Whatever nation you're in or whatever culture you're in, there are systems or systematic ways in which men rule men. If you come from a tribal culture, you're ruled by the chief. If you come from an African culture, there may be a king. If you come from an island culture, it could be a matriarchal or a patriarchal system. Wherever you're from, there is a kingdom mindset or a kingdom culture in which you experience rule, laws, sets and subsets of authority. This is important. How do you see? Depending on what has shaped your mind governmentally, you now come into the kingdom of God with an expectation or a mindset of what God will and won't do. Depending on your mindset, if you have been raised democratic, you start to think that God is democratic. You have a mindset where if God speaks something, you can think about whether to obey. You can get back to God. We'll talk to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask five people to pray with me about it. And eventually, maybe I might obey God or I'll keep testifying that every time the Lord speaks to me about that, I struggle with it. And we laugh at the fact that we struggle with our obedience because we're democratic. And in a democracy, However long it takes you to get there is okay because it's about the corporate rule, however long it takes. Hmm. If you come from a mindset where there is a patriarchal rule and a subset of rulers in governmental authorities, then if someone confronts you and tells you to do something, you may feel more charged to obey God because it's a patriarchal society. If a leader hits you in the face, not physically, but hits you with your failure or your mistakes or your problems, you feel confronted. It jolts you. It shocks your system. 
If you come from a matriarchal society where it has been mothers because fathers have been absent, then you may ignore what the pastor has to say. You ignore what leaders are telling you. But if a woman of God or a mother in the church or an intercessor approaches you and says something to you, it has a lasting effect. Not because it was more anointed, but because your expectation has been conditioned to the system you call normal. Now hear me when I say this, how do you see? The problem now becomes that we're missing seasons of acceleration, moments of breakthrough. We're missing divine times of miracles being loosed in our area because all of us are approaching God with a different expectation of how he speaks, when he speaks and what he's willing to do because we have reshaped God's kingdom into the image of the nation we come from. So we made God hostage to our experience. So now God, who is king, God is not part of a democracy. He is not a socialist. He is not a Republican nor a Democrat. He, there is no communism in heaven, no socialism. There is no democratic rule or right. There is no major majority vote. The angels do not vote nor get a say. The elders around the throne do not suggest to the father how he should move and what he should do. There is no one telling God what to do but God. And now, shock of all shocks, how you perceive God, how you see, has been crippled, misformed, misshapen because our ideological view of God based on our own political systems or governmental worldview has crept into the church and now we have made God a small man and ourselves big gods. And we've made ourselves equal to the Almighty so it has crippled our ability to perceive. So when God says, here is what I want to show you, we can't even see it because we've made God so small and we've made ourselves so big, we can barely tell the difference. And God says, but I am the king of all kings and the God of all gods. And at my word, I split the oceans. By the breath of my nostrils, I made the sea to stand upon its hinder parts as though it was a beast in the field. By my word, I made the stars to fling from the tips of my fingers, burn bright in the heavens and stand where they are. By my word, I have made the earth to spin upon its axis and not to lose function for thousands thousands upon thousands and millions of years. By my word, I have made the animals of the deep swim down to the depths where no man has ever seen them. They give birth and reproduce where no one has ever heard them. I make the goats to go to the tops of the mountains and no one has ever found them, yet they reproduce year by year. Only I feed them, only I can find them. God is describing the level of his godness. He is saying to us, you must begin to see me as an unlimited God with unlimited resources. Otherwise, you hold me hostage to your culture, to your nation, or to your own experience. Now we begin to have these small prayers, small dreams, small belief systems based on the small broken people we lean on because we stop trusting in a limitless God. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is all encompassing. He is everywhere at all times. He is in us and yet around us. He is holding our feet up when we walk and yet holding our head down when we stand so that gravity does not crush us and the earth does not loose us and spin us off into the blackness of space. <laughs> God causes air to be in our lungs while he causes strength to hold our frame up so that our lungs being full do not crush our internal organs. The genius of God is beyond me. 
He made a skeletal system that holds us while he made a cardiovascular system that keeps us alive, while we have a respiratory system that keeps us breathing, while we have an endocrinal, excuse me, indoctrinal system where we are causing sweat to leave our bodies and he's causing us to get rid of everything that would malfunction. God in his genius has kept us alive and functioning without once going to school to learn how we work. God is God. And yet God says, because you see me so small, when your body gets a disease, you weep and scream and cry because you forgot I made you without a doctor to tell me how. I birthed you without a woman in place to be a doctor to catch you. Wait, I made the sun to burn. So when you are in need of rain, I can send it. For I made the clouds that carry the water. And when the oceans begin to flood, wait before you break down and weep. Remember, I alone can split the Red Sea and make it stand still. Talk to me when the flood waters are raging high. In the midst of fear, we lose our ability to see. We stop seeing him as almighty. We stop seeing him as all gracious. We stop seeing him as the all knowing God. I simply say to some of you in the midst of the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of man and in the kingdom of the enemy, there are worldviews and expectations. But you must remember the moment you receive Jesus as savior, he snatched you out of the kingdom of darkness. He pulled you out of the rule of men in that their decisions were the only decisions that mattered. And he plunged you into the kingdom of God. It is his kingdom that has ultimate rule over you. If you believe. To many of you who are listening, I just want to admonish you this week. Remember what kingdom you're in. Remember who is your king. I know the nations of the world are going crazy, but guess what? They've been crazy since Noah. The world has been upside down, topsy-turvy since it began. From what we can tell, when there was only a handful of people on the planet, they were still killing each other. Cain and Abel are the only two boys, and they're killing each other. <laughs> so my question to you, why is the world affecting your faith when the world has always been crazy? Why is the economy messing up your joy when the economy has always fluctuated? And why do you turn and look at who is on the throne of man before you turn to face the throne of God? God is asking you, how do you see? Who rules your life? If the kingdom of God is ruling you, men cannot stop you. The devil cannot break you and the world can only serve you. If you truly believe you are part of the kingdom of God. How do we finish this on this session? Very simply, one of my favorite scriptures that I have fallen in love with. For you are now citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem. The Bible is clear. There are three kingdoms, three governments but the Bible says clearly, you are seated with him in the heavenly places. You are citizens of the new heavenly Jerusalem. The Bible says your citizenship is in heaven. Your inheritance is from the father and your dominion is in the son. How in the world can you get stuck worrying about things you cannot control when God has already given you authority to change everything around you. Trust in God, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And he really will. I promise you he will. He will direct your path. Three kingdoms, three governments. You just happen to be in the one that cannot lose. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. 
the Lord calls you to know. The sword you have does not go dull. The shield you have cannot be broken. And the shoes of the gospel of peace, they're just as fly and new as they were the day he put them on your feet. I'm going to say it like they said in the movie. Run, baby, run. God has got your back. We'll see you next time with a little bit more.